Hello and welcome to 52 Weeks, uh, a portion, double portion recording. Today is actually Thursday, March the 21st. I did the recording last night and when I got to the end of it, my camera uh, battery died and I had to, okay, come back and restart today. I must needed to redo the way that it was. But this is the week of March the 20th. Today is actually the 21st. This is the 11th week and going through week by week by week, getting an understanding of a portion. Um, that word portion means inheritance. It means um, covenant, promise attached to that is also land. So for the next, over the 52 weeks of 2019, we're, gonna, we're going week by week by week, just looking at um, everything that Holy Spirit wanted us to see. I left one of my notes that I needed anyway, doing the recap of the different topics that we've gone over thus far this year. Um, looking at um, carnality, rebellion, mindsets, um, just just looking at we went through and defined um, covenant, promise, inheritance, heritage. Um, we looked at the fact that um, portion in order to receive the inheritance you have to know your identity so we're talking about knowing who you are and what is rightfully yours in the um, word of God so that we can take and appropriate it and receive it and walk it out in the earth realm and so today we're going to look at portions um, in the book of Daniel Daniel chapter 1 but moreover the word portion took me there because I'll get there in a moment but what God wanted me to see is that he wants us to understand that we have to live an upright lifestyle. We may be in the world, but we must live upright in an upside down world. And God is going to empower us on how to do that on today. So let's just pray. Gosh, I'm already two minutes in. God, we thank you and praise you. We give you access to come in Holy Spirit as our teacher to lead us, guide us, instruct us, direct us correct us, uh, allow us to tap into the realms of grace like never before. Thus Paul, Paul said, because of the many revelations, was did he find that your grace is sufficient because of the warfare that comes to try and get us to not believe the truth of what it is you've just revealed unto us. And so we thank you that we will see, know, and understand our portion on this week. We will understand the choices that we have to make and when we have to take a stand for righteousness in the face of anything else, that you would get the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. So um, as you heard in the, in the intro, we are going to be in the book of Daniel. <clears throat> but before we get to Daniel, I would like to make about three points before we get to Daniel, and then we're going to go into the book of Daniel. The first one is in Acts chapter 26. I want us to see, I was reading the scripture for something else, and it, I wrote it down that this is part of a portion, this is part of 52 weeks. Um, Acts chapter 26, this was in an account where Paul was giving an account of what happened to him in Acts chapter 9 of his um, coming encounter number one that he was a persecutor but then as he encountered the living God and God spoke to him and began to tell him look this is the purpose that I've appeared to you this is Paul recounting this story there in Acts 26 and he was saying that uh, at verse 16 Acts 26 verse 16 the Spirit of the Lord said but arise and stand upon your feet for I have appeared to you for this purpose that I may appoint you to serve as my minister and that M is capital and to bear witness both to what you have seen of me and to that in which I will appear to you, choosing you out and selecting you for myself and delivering you from among this Jewish people. So bringing him from among his heritage to the Gentiles and sending you to the Gentiles, so taking him from the people that he was raised with, the covenant people, and bringing you to the people that I want to bring into covenant. That's basically what it was saying. Verse 18, this is the point. This is the purpose of these 52 weeks. This is what I desire that Holy Spirit would do for each and every one of us as we go through this 52-week journey. Verse 18 of Acts 26, it says, To open their eyes that they may turn from darkness to light, from the power of Satan, so that they may thus receive forgiveness and release from their sins and a place and portion among those who are consecrated and purified by faith in me, faith in Jesus. And so this is what we desire to do. Open our eyes so that we can turn from darkness to light. There's some areas in our life. Darkness is just the absence of light. Darkness is chaos. Darkness is ignorance. Darkness is error. So that we can turn from any areas in our life that need light 
turn from the dark to the light, turn from the power of Satan to the power of God. Because without Jesus, there is no, in, there is no middle ground. You go, you, you, you're going to do one or the other by choice or by default. And you default to the enemy, you choose to God. But you have the power and the help of Holy Spirit to help you walk in this choice because, okay, keep going. That you may receive forgiveness and release from sins and a place and a portion. So that's, that's the portion that you're going to have as, you, as um, my favorite scripture is Psalm 139, 23 through 24. Search my heart, O Lord, if there be any way in me that's not like you and lead me in your way everlasting. I backdoor that one with Ephesians 1, verse 18 through about 21 that says, flood the eyes of my heart with light so that I can see, know, and understand the hope, the width, the breadth, the depth, the length of your love, your purpose, your call in me. And so when you have the light flooded in there, anything that it's dark, error, wrong, sin, those things will be exposed. And then because you have Holy Spirit there, the exposure should bring conviction of sin, which brings repentance. I'll show you in a moment at versus condemnation, shame and guilt, where you run away from God instead of to him that. OK, now I see why he had me redo this recording. So that was one point that I wanted us to see when we come together on these calls. This is what our desire is. Turn on the light, O Lord. Turn on the light um, and, and, and help us to have a, receive our place and our portion, our inheritance. Another thing that I wanted us to see as we go through Daniel, Daniel is considered a son of God. Um, and as I was studying this, I wrote down what kind of son, what kind of son are you? Are you a son or are you a slave? Are you a rebel or are you a submitted son? Before we get to Daniel, I want to I want to expose this and get us to think about this. What kind of son are you? <clears throat> In the book of Daniel, we're going to see that they were given the king's portion and they chose not to go with the king's portion, which basically the worldly portion. The world is saying you need this, this and this to be successful. You need this kind of meat and this kind of wine to be successful. But Jesus said in John chapter six that you got to eat of the flesh of his blood and drink of the wine of his blood. And so um, just what portion are you going to take? Are you going to take the portion to suffer with Christ? For Christ's sake, empowered by Holy Spirit to help you through the sufferings, or you take the worldly way of ease. Okay, so there's these two portions, in the world but not of the world. Know this, when um, we're going to see this in Daniel um, chapter 4. The king, it was the king's portions that they were given. The king got lifted up in pride and he ended up losing his mind. So one thing that we're going after in these 52 weeks, we want to remove pride, fleshly pride, pride in self. Our only pride is that Jesus Christ is empowering us with Holy Spirit. We're alive in the land of the living to fulfill purpose. That's my pride. My pride is not, oh, look what I've done and my accomplishments. Because when I had to write my bio and give my accomplishments, it looks very prestigious on paper but that, that that that's that that that's fitting into the world but that's you know it, it's hmm let me see how I want to say this I'm not downplaying what I've done but I'm not leading with what I've done the issues that you overcome are an indication of the anointing you're designed to walk in as well as the things that you do properly for the kingdom are an indication of the anointing that's upon your life. So, okay, you've self-published and written four books and helped others write their book and you ministry of dance, ministry of song, ministry of, I call it a ram in the bush worship or whatever the need be. It's, it's, it's with me, but I don't lead by that. I don't try and build the line up or build people up with, with my accomplishments. No, I want to find what you are supposed to be accomplishing. As a matter of fact, I sometimes downplay my accomplishments because I don't want you to get locked into comparing yourselves amongst yourselves. Sidebar. Anyway, so the king ended up losing his mind because he had the wrong mindset. And he came to himself. And when I saw that he came to himself, this is why I'm saying, what kind of son are you? When it said that the king came to himself, uh, our assignment this week is to read through Daniel chapter 1 through 4. Read it in like the Message Bible or the Amplified and just really see what God is saying to you. You're going to see what I'm saying here. So the king in chapter 4 of Daniel, he came to himself and um, then he proclaimed that, you know, God is the Lord God's sovereign ruler. 
And so when he said came to himself and God had asked me, what kind of son are you? It made me think of pro the prodigal in Luke 15. The prodigal was a son who said, I want my portion. I want my inheritance now. We talked about in the first recording that in the de defining um, in order to receive an inheritance, usually someone has to die. Or there's times that there's um, provision set up for you when you reach a certain level of maturity. Well, obviously in Luke 15, this son had was not mature, but because he put a demand on it, the father went on and let him have it and let him go. And then when he realized I handled this the wrong way, it's all wrong, he came to himself in the pigsty and he said, I'm going to go back to my father's house and I'll ask him to receive me back even if just as a slave because the slaves got it better than I got it on my own. So his mindset was, I'm going to come back to my dad and ask him to be a slave. But his dad received him back as a son. So you need to be healed whether you're walking as a prodigal or even the older brother that stayed home that had an attitude with him when he came home to my whole love. He out there doing what he wanted and he come back and you're going to celebrate him. I've been here all the time and you ain't celebrating me. That's pride in another direction. What kind of son are you? This is the underlying message that's coming. I'm already at my halfway mark. So what kind of son are you? I'm going to leave that point with this. In John 1, 12, it talks about, um, but as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the authority, the power, the privilege, the right to become the children of God. That is to those who believe in, adhere to, trust and rely on his name, um, who owe their birth neither to bloods nor of the will of the flesh, that of physical impulse, nor of the will of man, that of the natural father, but to God. They are born of God. So what kind of son are you? Are you a son or are you a slave? Okay. Lastly, on what kind of son are you? Are you a son or are you a slave? Galatians chapter 4 verse 7, it says, Therefore you are no longer a slave, a bondservant, but a son. And if a son, then it follows that you are an heir by the aid of God through Christ. What kind of son of you are you? Do you believe, really believe in Jesus for salvation and that he supplies all of your needs? Are you the son that I want my stuff right now? Are you the son that when you have to make a choice or a hard decision for God, you'll choose the right way? Now this segues into the book of Daniel. Okay, what kind of son are you? We're going into the book of Daniel in the last few moments here. In Daniel chapter 1. Daniel, the children of Israel, because of the rebellion, I remember we talked about rebellion a few weeks ago, because of the rebellion against the laws of God, the ways of God, the plans of God, the purposes of God, they were carried into captivity. And, um, and Daniel, in one of my notes here, it was telling about who Daniel was. Let me just, this, this is, I'm going to give us the background so when you read it on your own, you'll see even deeper your portion and your inheritance and why God wants us to think about our character and then what kind of son are you. Daniel, um, it says, um, Daniel, he was, he, he was part of an influential family of the children of Israel that was carried into exile. And um, I have a note here about, who, how, about Daniel's background. I have two references. Uh-oh, my light flicking off. See, from light to dark. So I have a, a light that I got so that my videos wouldn't be so dark. And now my light's flicking off, but I'm going to keep going. Um, Daniel was carried into exile. He was from, from an influential family. And as we see in Daniel chapter 1, um, I feel like I'm all over the place. At verse 3, it says, And the Babylonian king told uh, uh, Phinehas, mm -hmm, the master of the eunuchs, to bring in some of the children of Israel, both of the royal family and of the nobility, youths without blemished, well-favored in appearance, and skillful in all wisdom, discernment, and understanding, apt in learning knowledge, competent to stand and serve in the king's palace, and to teach them the literature and the language of the Chaldeans. So this was who Daniel was. He was part of the royal family or nobility. He was part of the children of Israel. And he had all of these world, the things that the world could see about him was that he was well favored in appearance, skill, wisdom, and discernment. He, his reputation already came with him, but he built upon his reputation while he was there. I, I encourage you to read it on your own. Verse um, five, it says, and the king assigned for them a daily portion 
of his own rich and dainty food, of the wine which he drank, they were to be so educated and so nourished for three years that at the end of that time, they might stand before the king. So the king brought them in captivity, but he said, you know what? This is intellectual property. I, I, I'm going to use it right. So he picked the cream of the crop. And verse 6 says, among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And so they came at verse 8, but Daniel determined in his heart that he would not defile himself by eating his portion of the king's rich and dainty food or by drinking the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might be allowed not to defile himself. So Daniel made a decision. Yes, I'm in the world and I know that the king said this and he even said, you know what? I so believe in what I'm telling you, you can prove me. At verse 12, it says, Prove your servants, I beseech you, for ten days, and let us be given a vegetable diet and water to drink. And, and see, don't, and so then the eunuch said, Yeah, but then y'all gonna look bad. And he's like, No, nah, at the end of the ten days, watch. At verse 17, it says, As for these four youths, God gave them knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all kinds of visions and dreams. Verse 20 says, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding concerning which the king asked them, he found them ten times better than all the learned magicians and enchanters who were in this his whole realm. Let me tell you something. So they were brought in and they were trained. They were bunched in with the magicians and the enchanters and the soothsayers. And they brought the children, these four young men in with them as well. And they were trained. They went through the same type of training. And that note that I had found, it said that... Um, tr the Babylonians recognized Daniel's potential and put him into a top civil service training program, but even the study material was distasteful to a Jew. It covered sorcery, magic, and a pagan multi-god religion. But Daniel still did what he was supposed to do. He took a stand for righteousness. And I don't mean just to stand one time. Let me share this with you. The time lapse between each chapter. So in Daniel chapter 1, it was in 607 BC. By the time we get to Daniel chapter 2, when there, uh, Nebuchadnezzar has his first dream and he calls for the enchanters and the magicians, he calls for them all, they couldn't interpret the dream. And then when Daniel got called in, the spirit of the God operated through Daniel to bring not only the interpretation of the dream, but he had to ask him to show him the dream. And so that, that was, there was a four year time lapse between chapter one and chapter two. And then when we get to Daniel chapter three, um, after Daniel interprets the dream, he's given a promotion. His friends are given a promotion. This is how, you know, it, it's not a one time thing and it's not an only time thing. So then when we get to Daniel chapter three, um, it's 580. So it's like 20 something years have lapsed in between this time. And so I want us to see that when you take this stand for, for righteousness, for uprightness, it's a lifelong stand. It's not a one-time, sometime thing. It's a lifelong thing. Here's three points that I want us to understand about Daniel that I gleaned from Joyce Meyer for us to understand the principle of Daniel and you choosing to not defile yourself with worldly portions, but to get an understanding of your godly portion. Number one, like Daniel, we must determine in our hearts that we will not defile ourselves, but that we will stay faithful to the Lord. How long? As long as I'm a, as long as I'm in the earth realm. Then number two, an excellent spirit is one of the best character qualities a person can have. It talks about his excellent spirit at the end of chapter two. And then number three, we must refuse to compromise or to allow the world's influence to cause us to turn from God. I know it seems hard and you're like, I, I, it's hard for me to do this, but you have to do what God is calling you to do. So in my last minute, I ask you the question again, what kind of son are you? Are you the one that's a brat? I want my stuff and I want it now. Or are you the committed son like David, like Daniel, the example that we have of Daniel throughout the book of Daniel and toward the latter part of Daniel's life because he proved and stuck with it. 
God used, gave him some dreams and interpretations of dreams that we are yet living in in this day that we are in. So I encourage you to spend some time, say la, pause and calmly think on Acts 26, verse 16 through 18. Think about what it means to be a son of God, according to John chapter 1, verse 12, according to Galatians chapter 4, verse 7. That's a whole nother one. I have a video on identity that I am a son and not a slave. And you must understand your sonship to walk in all that God has for you. I pray you've been blessed.